of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Welcome to the January 6, 2020 Selectman's Meeting. First, this evening, we'll be starting with public comment. Anyone wishing for public comment? Seeing none, we'll move to the board. Mrs. Wolseley? Uh, yes, in our packet this week, uh, we had two letters from very kind uh, members of the community uh, thanking uh, firefighters from our great fire department for services rendered. They don't just put out fires. They're there to help individuals in need and it always warms my heart to to read the letters of appreciation and uh, firefighters Seth Butler, Matt Brillard, and Sean Morrison were singled out and uh, I thank them for their help and the men and women of the fire department who work so hard to protect us. Gina? Yeah, I'll second that. I always am receiving compliments about the fire department and their quick response time and the excellent job they do. And also I just wanted to note that uh, I attended a wake on Sunday for Kate Pratt, who yeah. is a, a longtime Hampton resident yeah. and had a lot to do with the Hampton Historical Society as well as the Garden Club. And I actually served on a uh, political board with her, and she will definitely be missed. So that's all I have. And Mr. Waddell? Thank you. Uh, tomorrow night, uh, no, Wednesday night, January 8th uh, at 7 p.m. at the Hampton Academy in the community room, Rockingham Planning, Planning Commission will hold their meeting. Uh, their monthly meeting and one of the topics that they're going to be talking about is housing shortage uh, in New Hampshire and the governor's proposal for it. So it'll be a good opportunity for somebody to go and just listen and see what's going on with that uh, workforce housing and all that. So again, Wednesday evening, January 8th, 7 p.m., Hampton Academy Community Room. And also, Happy New Year to everybody and uh, uh, sorrow for uh, Kate Pat's passing, Pratt's passing. Yeah, Kate Pratt was a wonderful woman. She uh, her and Cliff did so much in this, sta this state and town for a long, long time. And uh, uh, she was always such a pleasure to work with. Uh, again, I worked with her many years, different, uh, different events, um, different times. She's going to be sorely missed, but I'm sure her and Cliff are enjoying themselves right now. Yes, I'd also like to uh, bid Kate farewell because she was a wonderful person. And when the first board that I was on was with Cliff Pratt, and uh, Kate, back in those days, was on, I think she was on the Rockingham County Commission for 18 years, and she, I saw her just a month or so ago, and she was full of the usual that made Kate, Pat, <laughs> Kate Pratt. So she enjoyed her life, and we all enjoyed her. And Happy New Year to everyone. Next, we move on to approval of minutes. We'll move the uh, December 9th public session minutes. I'll second it. All those in favor? Um, wait a minute. I have a correction. Page 4 of 12, um, up at the top of the page, uh, Selectman Woolsey further discussed the driveway and noted a problem, and it says with parking in the right away, it should be the right of way. It's a small item, but I read the minutes, so there you go. Did you have something, Regina? I'm good. No. All those in favor, Nine. unanimous. Yeah. Next, we have the minutes of December 16th, I'll public and non-public. I'll move the public and non-public. I'll second. All those and I have a, I have a, uh, one quick correction on page five. Uh, if you go down about two-thirds of the page, <clears throat> Uh, Mr. Dufresne, his name is spelled incorrectly. It should be D-U-F-R-E-S-N-E-N-E. -E -N -E. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next, we move to the consent agenda. There is one cemetery deed on there. I'll so move it. Second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Our first appointment tonight is Christy. Thank you, Mayor. <coughs> All right, so I am 
just here tonight to um, ask the board to approve the default budget. Um, we had to make a correction to it. The lease for the MAC uh, truck that was on the 2019 warrant had been put into the budget in August, but we didn't have the lease agreement at the time, and so it was put in for higher than what it needed to be. So I have sent a request to the budget committee to um, ask them to adjust the budget if they so choose tomorrow night or at their next meetings and the default budget definitely needs to be reduced by that so it ended up being just over a thirty-three thousand dollar reduction so you'll have a printout christy for the budget committee? they already i've there. sent them a message already okay. so and so the new default number would be twenty eight million three hundred and thirty five thousand thirty six dollars 28 million three what? This is for the default. 28 million yeah. 335,036 dollars. Oh, three six. And it, so it's basically the same amount of a reduction on both sides. So nothing changes. The default in the budget will still be a difference of like 12,699 if the budget committee chooses to um, also make that reduction. Okay. Thank you, Christy. Yeah. So um, we're getting ready to get all this up into the DRA website and log before the public hearing. So I figured I'd come tonight to ask you guys to approve the new amount. I'll um, move to, ex to uh, accept the default budget figure presented by the finance director. Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, unanimous. Okay, that's all I had. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks mm -hmm. for coming. <clears throat> Next, we have uh, Public Works. Chris. Good evening. Jacobs and Jen Hale. Both are with us this evening. Yes. I brought more paper than you did tonight, so you <laughs> All right. Um, I believe that in your packets you received uh, two uh, recommendations to award bids, one for Elaine Street and one for the construction and demolition uh, waste. Uh, the first one I'd like to go over is the one for Elaine Street. Um, this was the work that was identified to be used um, with the state funds that we received in 2019. The project was put out to bid. We received four bids. Uh, for the project and the lowest bidder was Jamco. On your paperwork, there is a dollar value of 266,000. I was notified by Jamco today that they found an error in their bid. Um, so just to be forthright, I wanted to come to you and tell you that uh, the difference that would occur uh, is about $20,600. They still would be the lowest bidder by almost $54,000. Mm -hmm. um, so I'd like to approve the correct amount for them uh, as the recommendation to allow um, the town manager to enter into a contract uh, for that work. Do you need a motion on Is that, it? Mr. Chairman? Mm -hmm. Do we need it? Yes. Yeah. Okay, I will so move that we accept the correction on the JAMCO bid for Lane Street. I'll second and that. Um, the, the amount figure, is 288, 119, and 30 cents. 119 and 30 cents. <laughs> okay. I apologize for that. I just want to get in front of you. I'm in favor. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, the second request uh, was uh, for award is for our construction demolition waste removal. Uh, Re-Energy is our current contractor. Uh, we put this out to bid when we did all the other bids. This one, unlike trash recycling uh, and hauling, is a January 1st. So this is right now for these dollars. Uh, till the, um, we did a three-year term on this one as well. Um, there were two bids. The other person that bid did not put in what we consider a responsive bid. It did not include the components we needed, such as the trailer, uh, the hauling, and the actual removal service. Mm -hmm. uh, so we are recommending that we go with Re-Energy 
uh, for their new rate of, I believe it's 73.50. per ton. Yeah. With three, a haul of you know, haul three the 36. Yeah. I'll be happy to move that to accept that bid. Do we need to have, because there aren't three bids? Correct. No it does require a waiver. Waiver, that's right. So we need a, first we need a waiver. Right. To all right, so we have to do the motion for the waiver I'll first. Make a motion that we waiver. I'll second. All those in favor, unanimous. And then you'll take a motion to accept. Yes. I'll second it. All those in favor, unanimous. Very right. hard work, Jen. Now, <laughs> the other one on the Lane Street, we, mo we made, the motion, I believe, was made to change the figure, but did we approve it? Did you yeah. consider I, that I as moved it. I thought we approved it. It was in the main motion. Okay. I just want to make sure. Yeah. So we're not. <coughs> Damn pen. Oh, would you like a different pen? No. Okay. I should write less. Uh, let's see. What else was on the uh, department update? I believe also in your packet, so you guys had all asked, either collectively or separately, uh, for some costing for Winnicott Road. Mm -hmm. uh, both in what we consider, when I'm using the term roadway improvement project, that's the roadway, the infrastructure uh, to do the bottom up uh, construction. Uh, but we also broke it up just so you'd have the numbers of what it would mean to do um, what we call a mill and overlay. Mm -hmm. So you'd mill it out, overlay it, you'd still have to raise the structures. Uh, so there is some additional, it's not just pavement work. Um, so those costs were put in your packets. Uh, because we did hear a lot also from residents on High Street, we figured we'd get you the numbers as well so you can see. Um, if you look at the both of those cost of it, you'll see the distance is basically the same, but there is some difference in money uh, just because there is some PVC uh, sewer already on High Street. Uh, and then obviously the number of structures, the widths, those type of things all come into play. Um, so yeah. does this affect any Warren articles that you're going to be putting forth, or do you see any way of any involvement? So on Winniconnet Road, I believe that there's a draft Warren article in your packets as well uh, to withdraw from the road uh, capital reserve fund uh, to start Winniconnet Road. So up to, I believe it was a million dollars. And you can see on your cost estimate what a million dollars will get you. Um, that's what has to be decided on. Mm -hmm. um, the High Street, there is, no, there is not a Warren article for High Street. This is because we heard people talking about maybe they were going to do a petition or they were going to put in their Warren article. So just to be ahead of the game, knowing that someone would say, well, what's that going to cost? I figured we'd do the numbers as well so everybody would see what it is. So uh, what are you suggesting, Mr. Welch? Mr. Chairman, you have uh, two major arterial roadways that are in need of, shall I say, repair. Um, Winniconnet Road needs to have new sewer the entire, almost the entire length of the roadway. Wow. Uh, which is a substantial amount of money. I believe we're talking somewhere around six million dollars when you, you crank the whole thing together. Uh, High Street, if you do receive a petition article, and I, my understanding is from someone who came to visit me who's a resident on High Street, that you're probably going to get one. There is one circulating. Um, High Street's a little different uh, from Five Corners to Route 1A is basically all new sewer. So it simply needs to be um, overlaid. We need to remove the existing surface and then overlay the surface and with, with new asphalt and, and raise the structures to the level of the roadbed. The re rest of High Street needs to be completely excavated and the sewer replaced. So the two large projects, the two, mm -hmm. they are the two major remaining arterial roadways in the town. You have the money to start the work. Um, you probably will not get that work started for two years. Mm simply because you already have a number of projects that are out there under bid and ready for construction. So you're, you're, you're stacking projects up at this point. It doesn't hurt to do that if you can get a bid to do it. Mm -hmm. um, and then the people have to be held to that bid price. Uh, we're not sure you, I'm not sure you'll get a person to do that, but there's nothing like trying. Uh, a simple overlay can be done without the ramifications of having to excavate the roadway. So. If, like, if, for instance, we, we did Exeter Road, we did a simple overlay on that roadway after doing some repair work. Uh, that's held up rather well. We could probably get, what, 15, maybe 15 years out of that if we're lucky. Uh, 
Uh, and in that period of time, we could save the money in order to do the remainder of the work on the road. Mm -hmm. So it's a board decision. Uh, you have to decide whether or not you're going to take the balance of your capital, re almost the balance of your capital reserve funds to start that work. Mm -hmm. And you're probably only going to get a fifth of it done on, on one account. Mm -hmm. It's a five or six million dollar, between five or six million dollar project. So a million is going to get about a fifth of it done. Okay. And Chris? <laughs> This whole Winnicott Road Warren article stems from a discussion back at your uh, November 25th meeting where you asked, uh, one, would we come up with the estimate, but then second, would, would we come back with a draft article? And this is um, one of the ideas that was bantered around on the, on the 25th was possibly using the capital reserve fund. Fred reminded me the next morning that you just can't simply withdraw from that. It has to be part of that Warren article. Um, the reason why I like, would like it to see it go this way is it's going to take us at least a year to find an engineer to do the road improvements uh, design. Uh, because we are replacing the sewer pipes, I have to get the state of New Hampshire involved, Department of Environmental Services, um, and if we follow their process, i.e., uh, a pre-qualified engineer, uh, you may in fact be able to uh, get some of this money back through the state revolving loan fund or find another way to, if you will, <coughs> it's another funding mechanism. But I'm easily a year out to get plans um, that I could even bid. So I mean this, Winnicott Road will not, I would not break ground in, in 2020 on this. It'll be a 2021 project. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But it literally is going to take six to nine months to get to that point. So what are you suggesting? That we approve the article as written, uh, authorizing up to a million from the capital reserve fund, but I'd only end up using maybe 200,000 of it. I, I don't even know what, I haven't even looked at design numbers yet. Uh, and to, just you're talking for the Warren article. Yeah, yeah. That, that, that's what would be, that would be the first, once the Warren article is approved, that would be the first step is literally just design and engineering. And what about your feelings for uh, High Street? Well, it's the same thing. I mean, um, they're, they're two different named roads, but they're uh, with the amount of traffic on them and the uh, uh, condition of the sewer, they're both the same. I don't see, uh, for instance, when it kind of I broke into nine sections, because I don't see what more than one or two sections under construction at any one time, and I don't see them even being consecutive sections because that would be a major headache. Mm -hmm. For instance, if they're one side or the other of, let's say, the five corners on, of the High Street route. Uh, same thing about Lock Road and, and you know coming by uh, Landing Road. <coughs> those would be difficult sections to do, um, so we'd break those out into, mm -hmm. in, into subsections. Um, could both of them go concurrently? Only if some other future article with respect to High Street raised the funding, but I don't see where the funding would come from at this point. And Mrs. Wolsey, you would like to say something? I, I have a quick question. With all of these projects, it, are your town crews doing any of these? No. Uh, this is all uh, subcontract. It would all have to be subcontract. Uh, yes. Right. Okay. Phew. Because you've got enough on your hands. And Regina? Yeah. Um, so we're talking about up to a million dollars to put on the ballot for this year. We might not break ground for 20 till 2021, probably won't break ground till 2021. Right. But if we put this off for another year, then we're not going to break ground till 2022. 22. Yeah. Right. So it's like, I think that, and I mean, a petition Warren article, that's fine. They still have one more week to send in Warren articles. Yep. Oh, yes. Yep. So I guess if we see one for High Street, we'll have to uh, deal with it at that time. But I do have a question on Lock Road because that is the original project mm -hmm. that you recommended yes. to replace the, vitri the vitrified clay. Is that yeah. what? Yeah. So that that soil line is obviously in need of replacement. Yes. You, right. So that eight hundred fifty thousand dollars is for Lock Road from end to end. From end to end. With sewer drainage roadway. We see that project needing to get done first. Yeah. Right, so because that, that is, is what you to originally. Work on, right. And that's why we never put Winnicott or High first ahead of Lock is Lock's going to be burdened, taxed, relied upon as the through road yeah. to for people if there's other sections under construction. How do I get around town? Mm 
And that's a separate war and article. It Correct. is. It yeah. is. Yes. So that everyone understands. Yes. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. And Jim? Yeah, I, I totally realize the roads need being done, <laughs> but I have a hard time with it coming in now at the end of in December when we're almost at the end of the Warren articles and stuff. What, what kind of planning went in to do these roads? I mean, do we have a plan that we're going to do this road, this road, and this road, and are we in danger of a catastrophic failure on Winnicunit or High? I mean, it just seems to me like uh, the, the planning here is, doesn't sound good to me. I'm the sorry, planning but, is that Winnicunit was always in the CIP. Yes, was it further down? Because we envisioned stomaching wise that people would move one project at a time mm. and i might as well sit on this thing to silence it um so we always envisioned lock road would happen first and then either win a cut it or high in in there again in various subsections all this is doing is committing the capital reserve fund to a specific project and saying if you're going to get them done in a methodical, sequential way, why not start to engineering them and planning them now? It isn't to say we're actually going to let a contract go, because I literally would still have to come back here, and just like we did for Elaine Street, and say, do you want, can we grant the manager the authority to enter into a contract? So there's still another step to go through, but at least with this, we're planning them, and there is... When you talk about, you know, is there a logical step, well, then this almost, it solidifies the logical step. So in, I understand that. In, in, to, in answer to the plan, though, so we have a plan that gets sorted by all different categories. So in the categories, you have what you call uh, collector roads, uh, arterial roads, and maybe we'll call them neighborhood roads. Mm -hmm. So they have a, a sorting of A, B, and C. But then in that road, you also have the infrastructure. So we've gone through and we've sorted it the first time. Okay, which ones already have PVC pipe but are arterial and let's get them done. So they become a higher priority because the funding is less uh, and we can get it done. Then you have the other classification, which is the road classification. The actual condition of the road uh, it goes from zero to 100, 100 being great, just redone, zero meaning your catastrophic failure, obviously before zero, uh, you'd be hitting that. When it kind of in high are not nearly at 100, but they're not at 10 either. Uh, they have problems. They've been cut into for other utilities. They've been cut into by us uh, because of infrastructure problems. So much like Exeter Road, when you're <coughs> thinking, you know, which project are you going to do? Exeter Road came about because of its condition. Mm -hmm. And the big decision came along, are we going to do it with utilities or are we not going to do it with utilities? And when it came down to it, it was not utilities. It was on that same list and order, but when we sort them, we've always said, I mean, since I've been here, we like to do it with the infrastructure. Yeah. But when the residents and when it, the conditions and the seasons change that order, because the condition takes priority over mm -hmm. the actual infrastructure or the condition and the arterial component, they get moved up on the list. So while we always have a plan, that plan legitimately changes year to year. I, I agree with that 100%. Exeter Road, I think we didn't start talking about it at the last minute, though. I think that was talked about for an awful long time before that was put together. And all I'm saying is when the whole budget process was going through in the beginning, and when we started talking about Warren articles, why wasn't this brought up at that time and started to discuss so there could be a full discussion and people could see what was going on? I mean, I don't. I agree that it needs to be done, but... I just, I just don't see it coming in at the last minute. The other thing is, um, well, I forgot the other thing, old age. <laughs> but I think that, I, just for me, the, the planning of it, I, I just, I... Rusty? Oh, and would we, would we deplete the, the uh, fund? It's 1.9 million in there. And how much are we talking about using? A mil. A mil, so Straight. we're cutting it down pretty big. We complete, completely took the half other one big. away. With the More than half is big. And by the time we get to actually going in the ground, we'd be through another two-year budget cycle. We'd have another 600000 if we keep kept replenishing okay. the fund. Right. right. It seems reactive to me, not proactive. Well, the reactive part of us is we were asked on the November 25th meeting, yeah. and we're responding. Yeah, and I can That's see fine. how that happened. That's fine. Right. 
Yeah. If you want to know why particularly didn't we, I mean, I'm tracking here, we've got 14 articles ourselves. Yeah. I know when I served under uh, Mr. Noyes, maybe three, maybe four was all he brought. So we were already had a full plate. But we, because we're not doing the engineering, we didn't mind, if you will, at least going through the process of uh, finding an engi uh, qualified engineer and getting this thing started so that in future years, there again, this we would just plan this on our plate. We wouldn't take on another lock road in that year. Mm -hmm. We just would sit back and take the winter cut. And mine is, uh, my question, too, is, is the fact that, you know, we have a number of roads down on the west side of uh, Ashworth Ave. They've already been voted on to be done. That would certainly help with our infiltration. Mm -hmm. And if we have $1.9 million in there, I, I would think that that would help us a little bit better than uh, for, as far as infiltration goes and stuff like that. Um, I, I would think that those roads might be a, a little bit higher on the list. I'm not positive. We, we have they don't fall higher on the list because their pavement condition in a number of instances is better. So they don't, when you look at the multiple. But that's, those are projects we've right. heard about. No, I heard agree. about all along. And I agree with Jim. They, they all, all help this, with the infiltration. Issue. Right. And, yes. and, and, the, and I agree with Jim that, you know, we, we've heard of a bunch of other stuff. And then all of a sudden this one came up and it, it mm -hmm. seemed to go to the top of the list. And although Winnicott Road is a rough road, there are a lot of rough roads around. And, <laughs> and we need to do the, the whole infrastructure, not just put Band-Aids on it. We agree. Yeah, and Jen does a great job. She's like the combination of a psychiatrist and a brain surgeon for Rose. Yeah, you've taken it all Not into consideration. Not according to the last 10 phone calls I've received. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, well, thank you for being so enthusiastic because I can see you are. Mary Louise? It, it, I'm considering the possibility that we should start looking into declaring a moratorium on building in this community. Okay, well, we're not we're going to having do a that hard time. No, 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 but I'm just saying, I, in, a, in the reasonably <laughs> near future, I'd like to see us not as overwhelmed with all these roads and all these new roads because mm -hmm. I think you've got to bring uh, something to a stop here. Mm -hmm. uh, Regina? I have a question about the. It says the 1998 Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund, which is a fund that's in control of the trustees of the trust fund, correct? No, it's a, it was a capital reserve fund, started in 1998, but that particular one requires us to come back with a warrant article and allow the voters to decide what to... It's what held is, by the trustees. Held, right, held by the trustees, but as Fred's pointed out to me, it requires uh, the voters to decide which yeah. particular road they're spending that money on. Okay, uh, and then the $300,000 that we usually appropriate every year, is that where that money's going? Correct. That's where the, it's come from. Yes. And as far as uh, I'm not, I don't agree with the moratorium, but I really do think that the town needs to consider the lack of its infrastructure investment and the continuous development with no seem to uh, take that into regard at all. Mm -hmm. Because one of it and High Street, I'll tell you right now, I technically live off of both, and you see people driving on the shoulder constantly. It's dangerous yeah. if kids are walking or if the track team yeah. is out running in the mm -hmm. road. It's a hazard, and it needs to uh, it needs to be addressed. And you know, whatever you want to do and get it going for next year, I'm in total agreement with because I think that uh, the feedback I've heard from everyone that lives on it or drives on it, which those two moves, they are the two main arteries in the town. We need to start working toward that. And we have money there, and what? And I agree. The beach, the roads down the beach and on the west side. I mean, we had a warrant article. We don't anymore. But the other thing we need to consider is maybe tapping into, you know, our savings for this stuff, our unassigned fund balance. Because what else are we going to use it on? You know, I see, I see, I see to use it on two hundred thousand dollars for more flooding studies when I receive verification from the finance director today that the two flooding studies that we already have going on are still in process. So I'm not comfortable allocating another 200000 from the unassigned fund balance. I'm not, I'm not comfortable allocating $50,000 for, for the FEMA study when 25% of 
the cost is going to be on the town. Twenty five percent of what number? Mm -hmm. Do we know how many? Yeah. Do we know how many homeowners are interested in doing this? You know, th those are three articles that I am definitely not comfortable moving forward with. Anything to do with sewer road infrastructure that comes through you guys in the way you want to do, I am comfortable with. And I'm telling you now, that is what the public wants. Yeah. The master plan survey, if you go and look at it, everyone's talking about roads, sidewalks, roads, sidewalks. So why are we listening to the people that we're sitting here for? So thank you for all you do. There's also a lot of uh, taxpayers out there that don't want to pay the taxes that come with everything that people <laughs> talk about. But that's unfortunate. Um, so did you want to continue? Well, I had to no. say with that. What? To that Could I uh, just add something about the Warren article that's proposed? Which one? The one, the one for Winnicunit Road that we're just talking yeah. about. The form of it's fine. It, it, uh, it came up on my birthday, I think. I was away. Uh, but the uh, the language is fine. Uh, it, it, it does have at the end an and, and there is something to add. I, I would think that this would one, given that what's been presented, that this would be one where you would want to add the non-lapsing language. Uh -huh. And uh, just as in Article 20, which is the lock road sewer and drainage systems replacement, that had a non-lapsing deadline of uh, March 31, 2024. Uh, given the coordination, I would think you might want, Chris, something similar. Would agree. Thank you. So would that would, if you choose to go forward with this article, I just wanted to make sure that the board would add to it the, the non-lapsing language. Okay. We'll take that into consideration. What article? Uh, in your list of articles yeah. that you've got, uh, article, 20, oh. article 20 is the Lock Road okay. article. Oh, there it is. Okay. And article 8, this is listed yeah. as article 18. Are we? Can I guess? Yeah. This, this, my copy shows, says this will be a non-lapsing appropriation per RSA 327. Is that what you? On, on the Lock Road one. Yeah. But, and I'm suggesting that the exact same language be Road added Road. to Article 18. Yeah. Oh, Jim? okay. Okay, Jim? gotcha. Yeah, I just want to make clarification that I was not criticizing DPW. I was criticizing all of us, the town, the mm -hmm. selectmen, all of us for not being proactive enough. Yes. I was we not, understood. just yes. I want to make yeah. sure. I, was not I think in the essence of your, we need to sell it is what you're saying. We need to sell it, we yeah. need to plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and so did you want to discuss other Warren articles that you have there? So the only uh, other Warren article that came up that I don't believe we discussed that you had questions on uh, was clarification of yeah. the 50000 for uh, the transfer station study improvements. I believe that was another one that you asked us to come back and provide uh, additional information well, in that one. Okay. Article um, 34. Yes. Um, in that article, I mean, it is fairly descriptive of what that money is going to be used for. It is allocated for some purchase so we can do sorting uh, of recycling, so we can implement uh, new drop-off areas, bin areas, uh, work on structural deficiencies that will allow people to um, do different things up at the station. I wasn't 100% uh, sure if there was a specific question like, what are you exactly doing? Uh, these are some of the things that Does anyone have any, do you want to say more about it though? No, I mean, I, I was more just, the article itself was very descriptive of what we want to use it for. Mm -hmm. um, so Does I anyone here sure. have any questions about this? No. 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 And what about, are we having a further discussion on the trash here? Yes. I understand that there might be a motion here this evening to... There was a, um, Jennifer, I, uh, and Christy have been working together on uh, the multi-year contracts. I believe they have this or don't? I do not know if they have. Do they have? Fred has it. Uh, Which one are you talking about? So this is the major one for all our solid waste contracts, recycling contracts, right. and... Yeah, because I think before that, is this the time we want to have a discussion about is there going to be a change in the pickup of the trash at the beach? Um, <clears throat> I've been told that um, there might be a motion here this evening. I, I have... So let me make a comment, and I, I will be happy to make a motion. I have a motion as well. No yeah, motion. why don't we take the first motion that Regine is talking okay. about first. Okay, go ahead. Well, I think mm -hmm. that we should, the board should consider making a motion to 
we already have it that applies to condominiums. I think we should do it townwide, a bin limit. Yeah, it's something that I have recommended. I was hoping that some of this would be straightened out by the recycling committee and maybe they would come forth with something. But I am also in favor of a bin limit. Mm -hmm. um, I realize it's not the ideal answer, but it is what we're supposed to be having to begin with. That was the essence of, uh, even when the Warren article went forward, I think it's in 2011, was the fact that there would be a bin limit. Yeah, it was our and actually, all I, of a sudden, we both I have our, huge uh, issues yeah. about the Warren article that went through in 2011 yeah. that I'd like to bring up. It was the amendment to the article. That <clears throat> the purpose of the article that was recommended by the Board of Selectmen and brought forth at town meeting stated, shall the town of Hampton vote to raise and appropriate the sum of $1.292 million for the purpose of purchasing equipment and materials to permit the collection yes. of solid waste and recyclables materials in-house by the Department of Public Works yep. instead of by outside contractor. Okay, then it lists all the equipment we're going to purchase to authorize Board of Selectmen Town Treasury to issue and negotiate, to authorize Board of Selectmen to borrow in anticipation of, moved by, seconded by, Town Manager gave an overview. And then there was an amendment offered on Article 8 yep. to add after the third indent to allow commercial locations to purchase recycling and refuse containers refuse. at the town's yeah. rate, seconded by J. Diener. The amendment passed. Yes. First of all, this doesn't say that we're going to pick up commercial trash. And second of all, to me, in my view, and in some people mm -hmm. that I've talked mm -hmm. to after rereading this article several times, that amendment totally is not what came forth mm -hmm. as part of the original so, warrant. Well, let me just say this just a, a little bit. What happened here is, is this thing has morphed and morphed and morphed yes. along. But all along the way, as we sat here talking about it week after week, it was supposed to be 10 barrels. Right. And yes. then I, I'm not even, I can't quite remember exactly how that happened. But that was never the spirit of the board. I know that Rusty supported the uh, 10 barrel uh, thing all through several years when it's been discussed. And then things just started happening and we've, we've lost track. And I think the time has come for something has to be done. We first of all need to have a, uh, a you know, what is, the, what is the policy? The policy, need, there needs to be a baseline. And um, this may not be the right answer, but I think we need to go with the baseline and maybe next year, if we still find that we're having a big issue with the town, Maybe we'll have to even change it more so. But as far as I see it is, is that the Warren article back when we asked about taking trash, people did uh, approve that. So I'm not comfortable to go against it. That's why I am comfortable to go with that amount of bins, which was really what we all felt it was going to be here all through the whole time. But slowly, I'll just have to say, people, made it so that it worked better for them. And there are many people that have never changed from the spirit of having the 10 barrels to begin with. Mrs. Wolseley? Yes. When this Article 8 in 2011 was initiated, the option was for commercial uh, outfits to be able to purchase the carts. Was there a record kept of that? I don't, I don't know what they had to pay for the carts, but there was a, was there a That's limit a and was, and do you have a record of Jones and company? We have purchase? a record for every cart that we've released. Okay. And so I, I want to say too, excuse me just one okay. minute, because this just popped into my head and I think this is the answer to what you're talking about, Regina. When we uh, talked about them being able to buy more, it was more recycling. It was supposed to be more recycling barrels because that was free and supposedly making us money at the time. Right. Mm -hmm. So I believe that's how that happened. I don't think the spirit was ever there to have it for uh, trash. And now what we're all dealing with, not just here in Hampton, but all over the United States, is a recycling issue. So things change. And if, the problem I have is we've been talking about this really for all for 15 years but the last three years it just keeps not nothing seems to be happening and this is a fluid situation and we need to be able to move more fluidly than we have been moving mrs wolseley now the uh, we 
we pick up tra waste and recycling, how do we know that there is no contamination in the recycling carts that are being put out? Because we should not be picking up sort of contaminated material. We don't, short of, let's say, uh, dumping the cart on the street and then throwing it back in the trash, uh, yeah. tra truck. Uh, Our you know, policy we, we can open up the to check the trash. Right. I don't have the, the we don't have the manpower but, or the labor to go do I that. I understand that, right. and, but that's a concern also. Can we at this point, I, I would be happy to move at this point, that we restrict the number of carts for commercial use, commercial uh, disposal of waste and recycling. Um, individuals who have more than that, and I'm understanding that some people have up to 40 carts, which is outrageous. And more. They should be request. They should be uh, told that they have to, frankly, turn them in, and that they are no not allowed to have any more than ten out. Now, do you have the blue carts and the green carts? Do you have the blue for recycling? Or any, what? any cart that any color, any cart, whatever any they, size. But whatever they picked up or or purchased at the. They time. all have a number on them and. Right. We can identify. You can identify them. Then I think uh, I will move that we ask. Okay. Wait. Why don't we wait until we hear what Fred suggests? Oh, okay. Has, Excellent. Uh, because this is not something that has not been thought about. Yeah. Thought about, I think, is an understatement, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> uh, there's a lot involved in this. Um, you originally started out by saying that you're going to give two to every location in town, and then that morphed to. Uh, with the amendment at town meeting so that businesses became involved yeah. and then businesses started purchasing carts which is understandable because they have a lot of waste that they need to get rid of but there does need to be a practical limit because we can only pick up so much right. in a five day work period period that's just the way it is mm -hmm. uh, and to pick up more than that we would need additional employees and additional equipment and that's something the town has not wanted to do, and we're not recommending that you do that. Right. I believe that what you should do is you should do a couple of different things. One, you should set a reasonable cart limit that will allow us to continue to pick up trash and, and recycling as, as and be prudent in the community so we don't cause a lot of waste and contamination and, and material on the side of the road and so forth. You had voted some time ago to hire a consultant to come in and look at our trash problems, mm -hmm. to take a look at what we should do as far as billing, as far as collection, as far as uh, who should be picked up and who shouldn't be picked up and on what conditions and so forth. Mm -hmm. I suggest you go ahead with that contract because we need to really take an in-depth look at what's going on out there. And I, we can't do that when we're busy picking everything up. Well, is that something that you can find the money for? Is it something that you've we already have to earmarked do? it and you've already voted it? Oh, so we already have the money for right. that. Right, and I think you should carry through on that. Yeah, I think yeah. it's important because it will give us a lot of detailed information. I don't mind doing that, but I think the bin limit time is here. Well, yes. I, I don't disagree yes. that you have to have a reasonable limit, mm -hmm. and you have to have a reasonable limit on certain things. I'm not sure how to get to the reasonable limit on certain things, like very heavy weight of glass and so forth. Uh, but there needs to be some way of getting that material disposed of in a different method because it's causing us a tremendous amount. The taxpayers are coming up to a million dollars a year disposing of trash. Mm -hmm. So, Chris, what would happen? Um, Rick, can we go around? This the Rusty and I might. Yeah, yeah. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to keep jumping in here, but well, uh, I, I just, think we need to have everybody speaking at the table. Yeah. Yeah. Do you mind? No, but I think it's good to if we, he gives us what his impression. Uh, that's is. fine. Well, but I think we've had both sides of that table, and I think other people need to be able to talk too. All right. I think if we already have a warrant article, we already have a limit, then that should be, just be dealt with and 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 uh, enforced. That should be enforced. I mean, we don't need a new a new motion. We don't need. We get that already there, so that should be enforced. But I think we should go with the consultant, and I think we had a committee that did a lot of good work, and I think we should listen to what they did for good work. And Something I think that's a major problem that Sorry, needs to be dealt with. Yeah. 
I don't think we need side comments, all right? Mm -hmm. Didn't make any here when other people were talking. No, that's fine. I have to say, because we, we're going to have a motion here. Actually. Right, but I mean, I think, I think we need to do that. But if we already have an ordinance, we need to enforce it. We don't need a new one. And we need to go along and move forward on this whole issue. Uh, Rusty? I think uh, I agree a lot with what Jim says. You know, we, we've had this, this problem. It's been a long time. We had a committee that came forward. They did bring some decisions. Whether they brought what we wanted to hear or not, that's everybody's own personal opinion. Um, we do have a number of bins out there. And so, but I don't think we can just come up with a limit today and make it ready for tomorrow. I think we need to listen to what this uh, the uh, consultant says. We've, we've asked to put him on. We've asked him to do that and asked for, for their recommendations. That was part of what the committee wanted. Um, at some point, there's going to be an, a need to have a, uh, a limit on the bins, and uh, I'm not opposed to that. I just don't want to see us do something overnight and, and have that affect a lot of the people in this town. So um, I, I would vote to to continue on the path that we've already started. We started a couple months ago once the committee brought back their stuff and uh, bring forth uh, some of their recommendations and then need to talk about limiting the amount of carts. Point. I think it's my time to talk now. Go ahead. I think that, um, I don't think we started a couple months ago. I think we, uh, in, in, for all intents and purposes, we started again in a, three years ago. And right. something was supposed to happen the next year, mm -hmm. then the next year, and now we're here. Nothing's happened. What I'm concerned about and what I wanted to ask Chris is, so if there is a bin put on it, uh, people can bring their trash themselves. Uh, to, how does that work and how many, uh, how much trash are they allowed to bring? Is it on a per day basis, which I believe it is? A weight limit or something like that? If you were to lower the number of carts or establish a maximum mm -hmm. number of carts, those producing waste in excess of that, I'm sure would migrate to um, what you're thinking, and that is um, I have one company that receives all their stuff on a Sunday, so they load up their truck and come in, I think, Monday morning, and it, it's purely cardboard because they would never have enough capacity to get that all into the carts, plus they'd have to cut it down and fit it in and that doesn't work mm -hmm. so on another business that let's say produces more glass than another than someone else if they were reduced in the in the number of carts you would force their hand to let's say buy a glass crusher and contract separately for that major portion of their waste stream you take another business that may have kitchen waste uh, a, a high amount of that, they may say, geez, I, I really want to preserve all my carts for my paper products. Mm -hmm. Why don't I contract with a Mr. Fox? So I think from a very, um, just a, a responsive, a normal response type thing, people would move to uh, find those other means of dealing with the excess that they may As with all problems, people find an answer. Well, they do. And now, to answer your question, yes, uh, we're a thousand, you're allowed a thousand pounds a day that you can bring through the transfer station. The people that bring us those whole loads of cardboard, whole loads of um, uh, glass in the past, uh, anything like that, we just charge them uh, per, per, per pound. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we charge the contractors on the wood waste. We, we charge all the businesses for mm -hmm. if they have a you know a, com a commercial side side waste stream. So it's the policies and processes are in, in place. And are you picking up more than ten bins in any location right oh, yes. now? Oh, yes, okay. yes, you are. Yes, like many. Uh, one location has forty that I'm aware of. Another one has. 42, maybe? 54, 47. There's yeah, no, there's a lot. People don't realize it. There's right. a lot more. Yes. 40 is the name put thrown yes. out there. Right. I hear as high as 70. And I'm ready to make a motion. Or, Regina, you, do you want to make a motion? I'm ready to make a motion, too. But I want to say something that Chris <coughs> just touched on. And I actually talked to three business owners, beach business owners, this week about my motion. And they said exactly what you said. They said if that limit was to get put on, it would force you know, either to use Mr. Fox or to take it to the transfer station yourself or this board were entertained if they want more than the 10 bin 
10 bins since some of them have 40 or 50 or whatever it is, <laughs> then maybe we charge per extra bin. Like whatever, I mean, I don't know, but you know what I'm saying? Like, but I don't think that this is just reacting to something. I totally no, agree with Rick. No, it's and not. And I've trust talked me. to the people that, and as one of them, you know, they have more than mm -hmm. the 10. Okay. And they are saying that they it would force people to do this is an issue it's an issue nationwide right and it's the people that are in businesses have the ability to charge more money if they feel like they need to <clears throat> yeah. the and little lady that's it. living on some side street in hampton doesn't yeah. she has to pay the taxes she doesn't want to pay for someone having 70 bins mrs wolseley what about the frequency of pickup because a lot of this problem comes in the summertime with the commercial establishments and so forth uh how how frequently we, we you, probably would not change for instance the what do you what are you the doing daily, there? the daily pickup that we do down in the beach area due to the density of the development and the desire to keep it as clean as possible we wouldn't change that that policy with its ultimate goal at keeping the beach area odor free and clean as possible wouldn't change <coughs> I mean, that, that, that's the ultimate goal there. It isn't so much um, catering or pandering to any one business or group. Mm -hmm. It's really, unless you tell me differently, the board, well, I, it's, a, it's, a, it's our effort to, along with the fact that the carts are closed so, so uh, seagulls and other creatures don't spread it, I mean, that's the whole reason for providing the service mm -hmm. that many days a week. Yeah, I'm and not you, looking to change. And you have no idea whether the recycling containers are contaminated don't because know. you're down at the beach. For the most part, we and don't. And people right. are just throwing, and and I hope we'll be addressing this with the state as well. Mm -hmm. But you're, we're getting charged more and more now for contaminated waste. Mr. Musselman was pretty explicit when yep. he was in here our, at our last meeting. Um, I. I think we really need to address this, or at least start to address this right now. Rusty? As far as the contamination and recycling, it's not a beach town thing. It could happen anywhere. Anything, anywhere Correct. can have any type of thing. Correct. And Except it happens all the time. I think I gave that example when I did my Monday ride. Exactly. It was not just the beach. I mean, it is uptown. And right. As far as what we do, there are some people that are very blatant about the contamination. When you see an ironing board hanging out of a yeah. recycle bin, we don't pick it up. People throw them in and stuff. You but, know, we don't. But, so if we visually see it, we do not recycle it. But you have a greater degree of contamination when somebody's got 40 carts as opposed to my little crummy two carts. No. So, I don't have any proof of that. Yeah. Well, but, no. No. you know. So can I finish? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, right now, you collect all of those 40 carts that we're talking Correct. about. Right now, and you do that. Right. And I don't care if she goes, doesn't matter to me. Um, whether we may put a limit on it or not, there's still going to be those 40 carts. Mm. We'd only be, if you put you a limit on 10, up. we'd only be picking up 10. That's right. Yeah. Now, is there a way that we could continue to pick up those carts and, and, and build the individual place for if they had over 10? That was what the, the Saw Waste Committee came back and said you should hire this waste to zero, which has been the, I believe we've already taken that we're going to do that. And they were the ones that were going to design a program that, if they, as they said it to us, we'll design a program that will be successful we, and with the you know, recommendations that will be successful. And that's what um, I'm getting at. I don't, exactly. I, don't want to, I don't want us to do something and not be successful and us come back here two weeks from now or a month from now or, mm -hmm. or six months from now and go, we screwed up. We should have listened to this, this people that we hired to do the assessment for it. Yeah, I feel that, yeah, we can do that, but we need to set the uh, barrel amount tonight. Yeah, I'm ready and, to make a yeah. motion that we have a 10 barrel limit the same as we do pit condos. What, ten. what, what facts are we doing this on? What? I how, are we, how are we coming up with, with, this, with this number? This is what was, condo, this, so yes, and it's been limit. talked about. We thought this well, was Well, if there's a already a limit, then why are we making a new Well, motion? because it's, you, we're you, reinforcing it or whatever you, you want to call you, it. You placed a limit on residential structures yes. that they get you can have a residential structure with five residences in it and the maximum that's the maximum you will service and you can only have two barrels per residence that's okay. 10 per structure 
Yeah. So I think that's where this, the tenant is coming from. Okay. And this you was already what have was that always supposed to be. It morphed out of control. I, yes. Can I jump well, in? Well, can we let Jen speak yeah. first? Just, one of the other recommendations that came out of the uh, committee was that right now your current policy uses the word condo, uh, residential condo, five or more, and that was being eliminated. What was one of the things that came out is that we worked on that definition and that this board made it clear that condos more than five apartments it's more supposed than to be apartments and, and, and so place. i just want to i, I want to share that with what you're talking yeah, about right now that, that was that it isn't just condo that yeah, it it's, it's residential homes. units <laughs> under six if i may make yeah. a suggestion we've had multiple conversations about the number of barrels what your goals are i think what the best course for you folks tonight is make that your goal statement of what you want the consultant to come back with a program for for you that's what we intended in the first place right because there's a lot of questions 10 barrels is that 10 green 10 blue or is it five and five mm -hmm. how is that pickup so what i would say is all of your concerns make that a goal statement of the program you want these consultants to do because if we're not going to give them a goal to to build a program for us to think all these items mm -hmm. through so it's functional then we don't need the consultant we'll just execute it ourselves yeah. based on your your thing but the two things that i'd strike is your question of barrel limit and is that a set limit or after that do you want a cost recover right because there's questions within that cost structure we need to solve we've talked about this so that's my concern is i think it makes good sense for you guys to give that goal statement of this is what we want to achieve here's our maximum that we're going to pick up maximum barrels here's after that we want cost recovery show us how that happens that they're the experts that work with these guys on the street is it stickers is it different car barrel barrels so there are a bunch of questions we need to answer but it certainly will help that consultant if you folks give the goal statement of this is what we want well i think if we make the baseline like we're prepared to do yeah. right now yeah. 10 barrels the consultant just has to look at it I've and realize where we're so. at no i agree and then it comes yeah. with the other parts yeah. of i think this is something we have to enact now and i think yes. that we uh after you use the consultant later they can come up and we can bring it up again but something needs to be done now. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Wolseley. Yes. We are not dealing with barrels. Barrels carts. are round carts, metal receptacles. These are carts and they are color coded. So you have the blue for the recycling and the green for the trash. I don't know how these individuals are going to figure out how many of each they want. I agree with Regina's. It's opposite of what you just said. Right. What? It's green recycling and blue trash. Just I'm sorry, green is recycling and blue is well, they're different colors, and they are carts. But I and I will second Regina's motion. We need to get off the dime and get something done here and help the public works department, which cannot continue drowning in waste. And is this effective immediately? Yes. Yeah, we can make the motion right now to be effective, right? For yep. Yes. Yes. So as of tomorrow, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, it was just a motion. We still get discussion. I'm just going to say I'm going to vote against it because it's not based on fact. It's based on opinion, and I'd rather see something based on a factual study that will that will stay in effect and not be a month from now we're going back and changing it. And I, and I agree. I think we're putting, as Mary would Louise would say, the cart before the horse. I think it's not the barrel, the cart before the horse. I think we need to listen to what this consultant says. We can give him the instructions that we want to get to that and how he can build his system up for that. But I think doing it now is, is penny wise and pound and foolish. I think it's a mistake uh, to wait any longer because right. we have talked about it for yeah. 15 years. It's got nowhere. And I'm particularly upset about the last two to three years that we're into right, right. now. We said we were going to do something, and we did nothing, and I blame this board. Yes, Rick. Um, I agree with you, and I also want to say that the number didn't come out of anywhere. We've already established it for residential properties, and that's yeah. why I thought it made sense to make it a and town wide. It was always the spirit. And of also, the board. if we were a business, which I have several people tell me that this town should run more like a business, yeah. but it seems like every time we do something to make that happen, the business. Or certain people yeah. get upset yeah. that we're trying to run it like a business. Yeah. Public Works is drowning in trash. They're drowning in a lot of things and right it's now. Not new. So we, if we can alleviate some of that right now, the board has the authority to do that. And I think, and I believe, 
that it will force people that need more than 10 bins, if we want to think down the line and say if we want to charge per bin above the 10, maybe we can do that. Yeah, but that's something a whole needs, other act. Mm -hmm. Something needs to be yes. done now because yes. we can't continue the yep. way we're going. Yep. And I feel that the, when that um, amendment was made to allow people to buy more things, that was done on greed on several right. different areas right. by people the people that want wanted the barrels. Yeah. yeah, but it was agreed by the people that were on the Board of Selectmen too because they thought they were going to be making money over letting them have yeah. more recycling. Maybe it was, best. I can remember it very clearly. Yeah, it should never it. have ever happened. I'm voting. Okay, all those in favor? Three and against? Two against. And, and the only reason why I'm against it is I think we're, we're jumping on it too quick. I think we need to wait for the uh, the consultant and, and give and him some direction that that's the way we want to And it won't hurt to have the consultant have Yeah, power. that can happen at another time. <laughs> and the same thing with the recycling committee. Yeah. If you can get them to want to come back. Yeah. Um, but, you know, I don't know. I, I'm i glad that we finally have done something. Yes. Chris, did you want to add something no. or anything about how things are going to be picked up tomorrow? Uh, we'll just call staff in the morning, and, and at this time of year, we don't anticipate that right. maybe it's more than one business might have out mm -hmm. ten cards, even if they're on the collection schedule tomorrow. Well, I right. think Monday is the beach, and, and we'll just pass work with, I'm so. sure everyone here feels right. you can Good. work and, and do and, what and needs to be done. There'll be right. some bugs. We'll work them out. Yeah. We're, Good. we're used to doing that. So, do we have more? We do have one more. Yeah, one you more. still have the one question for this though. Is this five recycling and five trash, or is it ten trash? We leave it recycling? up to the individual business to yeah. decide whether they want three. Okay, I just want to make sure that's six, I think that's seven, eight. Eight. Yeah, I think that's the best way. Excellent. Know, but yeah. yeah, make it as easy as we can. I I was not interested in changing anything. I heard the voters when they said they're interested in picking up the trash. Mm -hmm. We are. It's this escalation escalation yes. that I have a problem with. And what about all the new businesses that are coming? Right. We don't want, we, we, we're we glad to have new businesses that want to do something about their trash. We don't want to pick it up, right. I think is the way that we need to be. Understood. What's next? Fred? You, you got into this by discussing <laughs> what you're going to do about the, uh, the money you need to raise to uh, accept the contracts for solid waste. Yes. So I'm going to pass these out, one to each. Around the room, I and, thought these and, weren't, uh, weren't, weren't uh, relevant until June. Well, one of them is relevant now, which is C and D waste. But uh, we have to award. Which is what we just voted. Yeah, we have to. We, if you decide that you're not going to vote this, then we're going to have to go back out to bid. If that's what it boils down to, because we'll have to reject the bids and go back out to bid and see what we get for new costs, which will probably be higher. We don't have to sign the contracts until May, mm -hmm. because that's what the contracts say. Mm -hmm. But we need to raise and appropriate money, so we'll have that money during okay. the calendar year to pay for the trash, particularly okay. starting on July 1, when okay. the contracts go into effect. If we don't, we're going to have a problem. Okay. We're going to have a $400,000 plus problem, but we're going to have to take $400,000 from some other place in the budget or more if we have to go back to bid. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to cripple somebody or some things. Does, we don't want to do that. Does this uh, mean that we will have a, a new uh, outfit handling this or a, like a turnkey or would right. we, we go That has yet else? to be determined because we haven't entered into final negotiations. Good. Okay. Right. This is just for the hauling of it. Hauling and disposal and yeah. any potential yeah. penalty for contamination. Yes. Right. What we did is we looked at all the bids we did receive. Yeah. Things that we would be able to negotiate from that vendor, yeah. looked at things we wouldn't. We looked at some of the higher costs, yeah. knowing that we would be able to negotiate with that vendor. Yeah. And we put in here what we feel are the numbers okay. that we can live with. And this increase is exactly what Fred just said. I mean, this is the difference uh, <laughs> from the increased cost for trash, increased cost for recycling, the fact that we've been on two default budgets that didn't have these contract changes, and when we moved the budget uh, from us to Fred, uh, to you, to the budget committee, it did not include those contamination costs. Yeah. So this is the all-inclusive number. And Mr. Okay. Mr. Musselman was very specific that prices are going up, so we want to try to keep a yeah. lid on. 
Okay. We're this suggesting in the following, in the coming municipal year, actually the municipal year right now, 2020, uh, that starting on July 1, the increased cost will be for the for the remainder of the year will be four hundred and twenty five thousand one hundred twenty seven dollars. Yeah. That's because of two default budgets. We're catching up on that. Okay. Okay. That money we're also suggesting that'll be new money this this year. We're also suggesting mm -hmm. that come from the uh, UFB. Well, the UFB. Yep. Okay. So we have the money in reserve, the un the, uh, the unassigned fund balance, and we're suggesting the money come from that area. Okay. Do we have a number for this article, Fred? Well, the raise and appropriate four hundred and twenty-five thousand one hundred and twenty-seven dollars. But I mean, article what? Oh okay. no, no. You, you Articles have, are going to change because you'll feed it into the okay. We'll feed it into, into the into the warrant. Okay. Articles go in the in the uh, okay. Uh, the manner in which the appropriations made. That is to say, the highest appropriation first to the lowest appropriation. The article okay. numbers. So, there's a technical reason for that. But we'll so may that. may I move that we insert an article which is not yet numbered uh, into our um, uh, warrant articles for March, uh, which is relevant for multi-year contracts for solid waste recycling, construction and demolition waste, and waste hauling. I'll second that. Any discussion? Jim? And for the unassigned fund balance, Fred, this is still going to leave us with <laughs> We have $8.8 .8 million in the unassigned fund balance. So far, I have recommended you commit $1,317,127. Okay, does this include in that $1 million? Yes, it is. Okay, so it still leaves us six Yes. something, yes. which is what, above the recommended? It's above the recommended. It's mm -hmm. above the amount we're, ha we're holding in un unpaid property taxes, and it's a, a sum that we figure is uh, feel that, that is sufficient so that we don't have to borrow in anticipation of taxes and mm -hmm. raise the budget for yeah. interest. Okay. All those in favor? Unanimous. Thank you, Fred. Um, is that enough? Yes. I see we have. I see we have. Oh. <laughs> this is what else tonight? I was I'm like, like, what else tonight? Know. That was a lot. This is, uh, Chairman, good enough for me. Before these nice department heads leave, uh, we were notified that another employee of Public Works, Joe Bishop, has achieved the status of Rhodes Scholar One. Mm -hmm. And you have been promoting this program for yep. a long time. Congratulations to okay. him. And thank you for uh, having your employees uh, participate in that program. Chris, I just have one question. I had somebody call me right before I came tonight, or I would have asked you beforehand. Christmas trees on uh, High Street, I mean, uh, uh, Kings Highway. They so started they today, picking up. It, the, the truck or trucks follow the um, same route as the um, yeah. trash yes. schedule, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah. So um, if they normally were picked up today and they think they were missed, they can either call the office in the morning, or our guys will go back around and check. Okay, because it normally takes how it is today, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. So, yeah. It normally takes like two weeks. We find okay. it. You know. okay. okay. The bishop so. you were just talking about, is he related to the bishop that worked here in the past? No. 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 I don't believe so. No. no. I was going to no. say. His father used so. to be a state rep out of Raymond. The oh. Only, yes. Oh, yeah. You're right. Good memory. Yeah, I can't the only remember. other yeah. thing that you asked yeah. for back in November 25th is um, we had talked about not only leasing to own the cab over trash truck with sidearms, yeah. but also a rear Mac rear loaded truck, and you wanted to know what the, those numbers would look like. I do have a. I think I, I took the gave other, a memo to but, you. Yeah. Yeah. You know, Jennifer assures me that a memo, uh, something went out December third, so you have that information. I didn't know if that was up for discussion at all, and that's up to you. Fred? No, in fact, we just changed the default budget to take into consideration the actual new price that came in, which there lowered it by $33,000. So. I was out for, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we won't talk about okay. that anymore. I just have okay. one last thing. Please way ahead of you, Chris. Okay. Chris, I did warn you about this, I believe. Is oh. there any update on the permit for the brewery? Yes. Um, I actually have a... The guys were asking me today whether I wanted it today or by the end of the month. I said, I'll take it today. This is the draft permit uh -huh. for them, all 22 pages of it. Um, 
their previous permit allowed um, a daily BOD of 3,667. It's now going to be only a BOD of 400. That's due to their digesters that they installed. That's they can regularly meet that number on a daily basis. How many uh, digesters have they got now? They have two. They still have just have two. And they're cited for four. Know. They they don't generate the waste volume yet to put all four online. It's oh. like because they've had two since they started. No, no, they've only had two since about May of last year. Oh. The ten years prior to this. They were supposed to have oh, them, they never installed them. Yeah. Okay. okay. Um, digesters are like baking a cake and that if you don't have enough cake mix, you only end up with cupcakes yeah. this high. Okay. So they don't have enough to fill okay. the... Well, that's better to, Okay. To but so uh, the only thing that we're adjusting upwards is the ammonia limit, but we have a lot of capacity for ammonia uh, and that's not really our issue. Our issue in the, the fact in the past was BOD. And um, I did note that this year we do keep track of, where did I pinch it right to the back? We keep track of BOD and um, total plant loading, things of that nature. I am pleased to report that uh, uh, plant loading overall was down by 8%, which doesn't sound like much, but when you're dealing with 900 and some odd millions of gallons a year, that's a lot of water. Hmm. Uh, I attribute part of that to um, maybe we didn't get as much rainfall, but also I think you, know, you can attribute it to some of the uh, projects where we've already replaced the sewer, that we're seeing less infiltration already from those projects. And that's why I urge the town to keep, keep going with those. And BOD has been down based upon in part of the lower flow, in part the BOD follows it, and that's <coughs> dive down too. I know for this past month it was well under 4,000, and it's well over five during the summer to give you a comparison. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, those parameters are dropping, uh, making our job less difficult. Okay, yeah. And um, you have a letter here that was given to us, uh, Chris, about the uh, total residual chlorine um, that uh, was being Mike Carl was yep. looking at there was some freeze up in a pipe or something that's that's all set now that's it is all, all set resolved. that was due to high flows into but, the plant but thank okay. you for the information yep. that you so had the problem anything else better okay. no, thank you we need to move on because there's thank people you. getting restless <laughs> <laughs> thank, you. Thank, you. thank you thank you thank you now we have the town manager's report mr. Welch mr. chairman members of the board uh, warrant articles for the annual town meeting may continue to be submitted until January 14, 2020. Please remember to have the valid 25 signatures of registered voters and submit the petition to the Office of the Board of Selectmen. Those who desire to obtain exemptions from property taxes may obtain the necessary forms of the assessing office. Petitions must be submitted no later than April 15, 2020. Applications for abatements from property taxes must be submitted by March 1, 2020. The necessary forms are also available at the assessing office. Property owners in the Hampton Beach precincts who do not rent or lease their property may file for abatement from the portion of the property tax de devoted <coughs> excuse me, to entertainment expenses of the precinct by April 15, 2020. Again, those forms are in the assessing office. I was asked earlier this evening if uh, I had the dates for uh, open nominations for people to sign up for public office in the town as a, as a, as a town boards and commissions and committees. Uh, I looked at the calendar and I believe, although I'll have the town clerk officially do it, I believe that the period is January 20th to January 31st. They always close the day before the deliberative session, which is going to be February 1. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. January 22nd to the 22nd. <clears throat> okay. Um, questions for the town manager to report, Mrs. Wolseley. No, thank you for edging up. I'm good. The only thing I said is uh, to to your last point. Could we have the town the town clerk? Put We're going to ask in the morning and have her put that on the website yep. so that people asking questions can have that. Right. Very good. Thank Jim, you. Jim, any questions for the town yep. manager? Moving on to old business. We have the petition for removal of Unitil's reclosure device on pole number 38, Kings Highway, and 17th Street. Mr. Welch, 
Mr. Chairman, uh, I'm going to suggest to you, I've, I've spent a lot of time going over this, looking at the file, reading it. I spent more than 20 years working for an electric utility. I've got to tell you, uh, in all honesty, that we don't have the experience necessary to find one way or the other in this matter. Um, even with my experience in working in 20 years in, in management for an electric utility, I still don't have the necessary experience to, to uh, give you the engineering scoop on what needs to be done here and why it needs to be done. In respect for that, uh, I believe this matter belongs properly in the, before the Public Utilities Commission or the Superior Court. I suggest that, in fact, the board find um, and, and um, refuse to uh, decide this petition uh, because of lack of engineering expertise needed to properly evaluate the merits of the petition and the consequences for utility operations and customers. So do we need a motion for that? I yes, sir. I move the board refuse to decide this petition on account of the lack of engineering expertise needed to properly evaluate the merits of the petition and the consequences of the utility operations. And do we have a second? No. I'll no. second it. Okay, I, discussion. Mrs. Probably. Wilsley? I, I appreciate our manager's comments. I don't think any of us are very expert in this, but I think this is outrageous. This is absolutely outrageous to put to put something that is distressing this neighborhood. The Unitil people should know what they're doing, although there are days when I doubt it. And I think it's terrible to impose something like this on an innocent neighborhood just sitting there expecting to get reasonable service. I'm going to vote against this. I think this is a, a dreadful, dreadful imposition. And I don't think any of our taxpayers and property owners deserve to be treated this way. Regina? Uh, Mr. Chairman, actually the petitioner that sent us a letter in December is here. I'd like to ask if we can have him come up and yeah, say I'll, how the... Uh, yes. Okay. Does, uh, how does the rest of the board feel? We've already heard from the petitioner. Heard, yeah. We haven't yeah. heard since well, the make a motion to have him I make speak. a motion to allow I'll second Donna that. to uh, come up here and okay. speak. All those in favor? Against? Okay, so then I'll just say what I have okay, to say. Okay, please do. Well, first of all, I'm told by Mr. Lagana that that what they did has not worked, mm -hmm. and I also consider the fact that they did it in late fall, and the sun is not nearly as high as in the summer, that there's really not any decision that can be made till right now. And I also 100% agree with Mrs. Wolseley. Now, if you remember, when we go back, we received, I think, a 7 or 11-page letter from Unitil that I think was addressed to Mr. Mr. Ladon and it was also addressed to the board. In that letter, it actually stated that these reclosures are being put up in Hampton because of development at the beach. Mm. Now I've talked to several neighbors down in that North Beach neighborhood and they're telling me they've done some research that they found out that that specific recloser was put up there for the new condominiums that are being built at Little Jack's. So, you know, later on, well, you can call it whatever you want, but we got these things, I think we have three or four of them anyway throughout town. Uh, there's one across from Arcadia out in the marsh, and I'm, I mean, Unitil stated in the letter that they are being installed because of the development that's happening. Mm -hmm. So this is another infrastructure issue that is not, it's getting reacted to because we just keep building and not taking anything into consideration. Right. We have a uh, Warren article for a master plan, which I am definitely in favor of working on a master plan for the town. But all as I read about it in the Warren article is deep, you know, sea level rising. How come we're not talking about infrastructure? Yeah. And what are the plans are? Have we hit absorption rates on things? Have we hit absorption rates on condos? Have we hit absorption rates on retail? I mean, no one's talking about that. And now we're, every, everything we do it seems like it's alienating people yep. that have just been sitting here and living here their lives in Hampton. Yep. And now Unitil needs this because we're overdeveloping, in my view. Yes. And this is just another, you know, the utility companies are reacting because Unitil probably doesn't have a choice. They probably do need this thing to supply the electricity that they need. But I am definitely not going to vote to just ignore the problem. So I stand with uh, 
Absolutely. I would just like to say too that I just read, um, and I did this for some, another thing that we're going to talk about tonight. But I made a pur uh, purposely looked up uh, about Hampton's population, um, and it is amazing. Everyone thinks that we're just bursting at the seams, but in reality, Hampton has the same population today that they had in 2000. It, it has it did not change in 2000 it did not change in 2010 and it appears there was a, a reference of uh, 2017 it appears that it's gone up 500 people so it's not like there's that many more people in Hampton um, what there are uh, the, yeah there are new uh, energy needs but we have the same amount of people that we've always had. So whether they're living in condos or houses, there's not a big change. Just like you know, uh, in other areas of Hampton, there's a declining uh, school enrollment. There are there is not a big change in our population. So any other comments? Yes. All those I, in I, favor? I, I, yeah. I think part of our job is to help advocate for residents who are put in a situation like this that had nothing, that was none of their doing. They're being imposed upon by a big utility company. I think it's very sad that we have to sit here and tell private property owners, tough luck, you have to go to court and spend your money and fight this thing. Thank you, court. Mrs. Mosley. All I those agree. in favor? Uh, of my petition? Yes. Did you want yeah. read it again, Jim? Yep. <clears throat> I move that the board refuse to decide this position on account of a lack of engineering expertise needed yeah. to properly evaluate the merits of the petition and the consequences of the utility operations that it's best done in a different level than ours that has more expertise. Right, so exactly. all those in favor of that motion, three against two thank you um moving on to appointment of new hampshire coastal resistance and cultural Historic districts commission yeah <coughs> you should take care of your own problems mrs no Wilson. i mean it's not my problem yeah, it's just, well, just it, please it's, don't it's, bother it's coastal to teach me how to it's speak. coastal resilience just, okay okay thank you do you remember that you just but it might it a might make a little that difference. Was completely wrong, and everyone's going to put their garbage in the wrong barrel tomorrow. Maybe. <laughs> so leave me alone. <laughs> uh, God. Uh, so we have a volunteer. And who is that? Our conservation officer is willing to volunteer to do Dan? this. Dan. Yes. Oh, good. Thank you. Um, I will so. so move. Do we have to do anything there? Make we a motion. We need to okay. nominate her. Yes. I will so move. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor. And who are we nominating? Ann Carnaby. Yep. Yeah. Ann Carnaby. Oh, yeah, well, I thought you said it was Ann. I thought you said it was Ann. It's Ray Ann. Ray Ann. I thought it was Ann Carnaby. Yeah, that's right. You want us to put your yeah. name on it, Ann? I thought it was Ann Carnaby, so I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah. Ann's here as one of the restless audience. Yeah. All those in favor? So, Ray Ann. Ray Ann. Thank yes. you. Thank you. Oh, um, <laughs> moving on to the. Sorry, Ann. <laughs> 2020 Warren articles. Why don't uh, let's see where? Why are those guys here? Yeah, I don't. I thought well, it was one of the things you, you need to discuss is the master plan. Uh, so so that's Warren why article you have not discussed. Okay, well, so why far. don't you come up and we'll take that Warren article first? I vote yes. <laughs> <laughs> So we're pleased to be here this evening to speak with you about our uh, proposed uh, pr article for professional services to complete a comprehensive update of the Town of Hampton Master Plan. Um, I have with me this evening both uh, the Planning Board Chairman and the Vice Chair, uh, Tracy Emmerich and Ann Carnaby. Um, so th this is, as you know, the culmination of, of many months of work on this. Um, we have a master plan steering committee that formed as a result of uh, master plan sessions that we've been holding since uh, June of 2019. 
a lot of work has gone into this. Um, it's also had the re review by the town manager and town attorney. Um, many drafts have evolved over time, and what you have before you is, is the, the final product that evolved from, from those months of work. Um, the article um, requests the sum of 125000 for for this purpose of up the comprehensive update of the master plan. Um, that figure was derived through a comparison of master plan costs in several other nearby communities. We also, as part of that, looked at the population and valuation of those communities to come up with an accurate number um, that, for us to move forward with. We also obtained some initial estimates from um, a couple of other consultants um, to make sure that we were right in the area that we should be asking for so that we don't have to return later and ask for, for more. Um, this was all information evaluated by the steering committee, and they unanimously uh, supported the article um, back uh, in December, at the December, uh, I believe it was the 19th or 18th uh, meeting. Um, we believe this article clearly and concisely summarizes its purpose and highlights why an updated comprehensive master plan is so urgently needed at this time. Uh, some of the key points of the article are that it's required by law to be updated periodically, the master plan that is. Um, it needs to meet more recent challenges to better plan for the future. It will help to preserve, protect, and enhance property values and quality of life from Hampton residents and will enable the town to qualify for grants for projects that are otherwise unaffordable to the town. And there will be robust public participation throughout the process. Um, at this time, I would invite Tracy to add some more words about that, and then from there we'll go to Ann to talk about the survey that, that we've been working on for the past couple of months. Well, I'll start in the form of an answer to your question. Why is it so much about flooding? Mm -hmm. Uh, we started down the road of the master plan redo because our current master plan in large was written in 1985. Yes. There, you know, there was no internet, there was a lot of things that didn't even exist back then. Uh, but the state came to us and said, we have received a grant uh, and we'll share that grant with the town of Hampton. Uh, the grant was for $45,000 and it was to cover uh, coastal flooding and Ham Hampton is uh, earmarked as the highest risk yep. community in the coast. So we were happy to have her come forward, off, offer us a chapter of our master plan. Uh, that's the vision chapter. A master plan has to have two <coughs> parts to start with. It has to have a vision section and a land use section. So we've got funded $10,000 to start down the road of the vision portion. What we had to do though is we have to share the consultant with the state who is primarily interested in the, the flooding issues. Mm -hmm. So that's why that the, the article reads heavily towards that portion, right. uh, because they're providing the funding for us. <laughs> uh, so the vision portion you know, will be completed as part of this uh, $45,000, but also the state's concern about ha flooding in Hampton will be addressed. That information will become part of the master plan for Hampton as well. So. When we started having our meetings, of we had the uh, steering committee put together, mm -hmm. uh, this kind of dropped in our lap. And so we had to kind of double clutch and all of a sudden get ready to do something. You know, before we were just uh, doing the affixing twos. Yeah. You know, we're affixing to do this, affixing to do that. And all of a sudden we got funded. And it's like, whoa, what do we do now? We got money. Uh, so we, we have had bids, uh, we, we had bid review committee. Uh, we're meeting with the consultant firm that was selected, which is Malone and McBroom. Uh, currently does work for the town of Hampton, actually, the Public Works. Um, and, I, and we've tried to keep everybody informed on the committee because they represent boards uh, of the, around the town and uh, citizens at large. Uh, so we're trying to do it methodically, uh, and we're trying to do in coordination, I think we have a very good relationship with a representative from the state. She's been very helpful uh, and taught us a lot mm -hmm. uh, because as we move forward with the funding we were hoping to get with this warrant article, we have to put together the RFP. And so now we've got one as a model that said, here's how you do an RFP for <coughs> these things. Uh, so that, that's been an education in itself. Uh, but we are moving forward uh, and we've started uh, with an online research project uh, and at that point, I'll turn it over to Ann. 
Um, you better pass these cards out. Yeah. There's more than enough for you. Oh, Keep thank you, sir. a few to give to your friends so that they oh, take the survey to you. Sir. It's the URL for the survey is publicinput.com M P H S one Master Plan Hampton Survey One. We started this because or when we started it, we knew we had to do the master plan. And we knew we had to get public input for the vision section. Mm -hmm. And we'd already worked with the survey software that we got through our membership with the Rocking and Planning Commission. So that's been paid for by our membership that we've already given them. Uh, this round, we're hoping that we can convince the uh, consultants who have already said in their proposal that one of the big tools they're going to use is for public input is another survey. And they also mentioned giving out cards, which I thought was interesting <laughs> because that was Tracy's brainstorm. So we're collecting information. We want to know what you think about what you want your town to look like in 15 years down the road. So many of the questions that you wrestled with tonight, yeah. maybe not trash, but all the rest of them yeah. will be guided by this master plan that we will come up with. That we have money to start two of the most important sections for mm -hmm. us is, um, was just a delightful surprise. Uh, <laughs> Specifically, and I, I, I will get another update on the survey um, tomorrow, but there are 20 questions in the survey yeah. that have to do with what you think about where we're at now in a number of areas of aspects of the town and what you'd like to see going forward. Do we need sidewalks? Do we need sewers? Do we need whatever? Yeah. Um, so there are 20 questions. There are a lot of open-ended boxes that you can write comments in. Um, you can elect to have your responses made available to the public or not. You can respond anonymously or you can put your name to what you add. Mm -hmm. You can take the survey a few times. Sooner or later, the software will catch up with you and say, <laughs> well, no, wait a minute. <laughs> but <laughs> and what about if from town, in town or out of town? People who are stakeholders in the town have a right to have their say, um, whether they exactly live here. You know, the survey isn't going to say, no, you can't because you only own mm -hmm. 35 houses that you rent out here and, and you live somewhere else. So it's, it's pretty amazing software. Mm -hmm. um, clearly, you've been looking at the comments <laughs> regularly, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. and I think it's kind of fun to go and look at that. One of the things that we expect is that once you take the survey, if you um, start thinking about it and come up with another good idea, go back in and, and add that idea to it. Mm -hmm. because. Um, the more input we get on this, the more full and rich our vision section is going to become. We're um, encouraging everybody to take the survey, of course. I'm working with the board of the li Friends of the Library. Yeah to set up a schedule where people who don't have devices or computers yep. 
can come to the library and get help in putting the survey. If we have to do some hard copies, we, I, I will have to write the survey again for print, and then somebody's going to have to input it. So we're really trying to um, go the other way and, and make it poss possible for people to get help to take the electronic survey. We expect to run the survey at least through the end of January, Good. and then we'll see what our consultants have to say. But the reason you haven't heard about the rest of the aspects of the town mm -hmm. um, is because we've got these two chunks to work on first. The money we're getting is earmarked for those two topics only. Yeah. Mary Louise. Yes, I, I commend the planning board uh, when uh, the uh, our town planner, Jason Bichon, took over several years ago. He uh, inherited an office that had not been really uh, up, to, uh, up to par. Uh, I supported the master plan article last year, but this is a real revelation. This is a tremendous uh, step forward. And I congratulate the planning board and all of you. Jason's done a lot of hard work. And uh, he even uh, it was open to suggestion when the uh, committee was set up. And uh, he even let me make a suggestion. <laughs> but uh, I think you're, you're doing a tremendous job. And this is something that will be a huge benefit to the town. And you won't have to plow through two feet of old uh, master plan to get things done. So I thank you. Jason, I want to really thank you. You have worked so hard on this, and I am proud to support it. Okay. Yeah. yeah, and I, as uh, representing the Hampton Beach Area Commission at the beginning, um, I share it with some other members, uh, but was very impressed with your approach that's gone mm -hmm. here. And um, I think the timing is everything, and this is the time. Yeah. Um, the, the planning board uh, is l lucky to have uh, Jason. He's coming right along, and things have gone quite well with him here in Hampton. But more importantly, you have people like Ann, who has been <laughs> done a great job. And then, even more importantly, we have Tracy, who reins them all in <laughs> when they get out of control. <laughs> All, everyone, not just, you know, everyone on the board who has different ideas. Tracy has a very nice way of uh, bringing it back to reality. He tries to fly under the radar, though. Mm, he I, did I a do, good job. I do just want to add, too, I mean, a lot of credit is due as well to Lori in my office yeah. as well. Oh, I mean, yeah. She has done a tremendous yeah. job. She's a uh, I mean, above and beyond assisting with this. So I, yeah. I just want to thank her for, for that as well. Yeah, and everybody else that's on the committees, too. And that's right. Yeah. Brian right behind that's you right. there. That's right. Absolutely. But uh, it's, yeah. I think that that's what we're trying to do. Like G Jim's trying to sell some other Warren articles. We're, we want to sell this one. It really yes. is something that the people, Definitely. it will benefit people for years to come. Yes. Do you want a motion on, the, on this? It's showing as article 10 in our printout. Are we? Did you want to say something? I just wanted to say, I, w I did the survey almost right in the beginning, and yeah, I loved too. the questions. I thought they were perfect for totally applicable to the town. Yeah. And I have been watching the meetings, but not everyone has, and I was a little disappointed to not see more of the public show up, right. which, you know, that tends to happen a lot yeah. around here. So that was what, what I asked earlier today about the flooding. That's feedback that I'm getting. Okay. But I do, I have watched, and, and I did want to ask you, how many people, do you know how many people have done the survey so well, far? Well, here, here we go. Here are the, num the, the most current numbers that I have. Um, there have been, as of December 12, so we're a month out here, we have had people who have looked at the survey only, okay. 1622. Oh. People who have answered at least one question, 403. Ooh. So there are lookers. <laughs> and hopefully those people will think about what they've seen and then go back and respond yeah. Yeah. that hopefully so within the month. 
We need to get more people to complete the whole entire yeah. survey. We do. Yeah. Um, it, it's in the beginning when the survey first went live, it was right at the top of the town website mm -hmm. and you could just click that link and now it's hard to find. Can we so. push it up Mr. Welch? Can do anything you want, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, we'll push it okay. to the top. <laughs> yeah. I, I would I love to see idea. it right at the header of the home page. Yeah, we'll see if we can Again, do that. that will make it a lot easier. We've had 80 people subscribe to getting <laughs> feedback from automatically from mm -hmm. the survey and um, 419 open-ended comments. Oh. I'll get another update tomorrow and um, I'll have it for subsequent meetings this week, but please, I, my goal is to end up with a master plan that I can hold in one hand yes. and that will be a tool for all of you. Yes. It should guide your, <laughs> your decisions going forward. So. And, and Regina, to your point about public involvement in that, I mean, the master plan sessions we've been holding, the very first item on the agenda is always public comment. Yeah, we've no, structured it that yeah. way. So, and, and when I spoke with the board a, a few months back, you know, we're, we were hoping people come out and, and that they come in and tell us what they think. I mean, certainly do the survey, but come to the meeting too. And, and, and that tell us what you think. So that they can come in and talk yep. and then leave again. They're welcome. So Absolutely. Have to come come on night, night, like what okay. happened to you tonight. <laughs> So, so take the cards, take no, the we, survey. Yeah, and take the survey. Mrs. Wilson, were Are you we making a motion? On, uh, what were you making a motion? Recommending Article 10, the master plan. I'm happy to make that motion. Okay. I'll second it. All those in favor, unanimous. Okay. Thank, so you. thank you. Thank you very much. Great job. And um, so now we're going to go back to uh, the American Legion. Yes, we were at the the 2020 Warren Articles. The first is the American Legion 35 Petition Warren Article. Mr. Welch? Mr. Chairman, the, the Legion petitioned um, last year. The town meeting voted it down. They petitioned again this year. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> they would like to purchase enough um, grave markers, grave marking flag holders. Yeah for veterans who do not have them in the cemeteries. And the cost to do that will be $6,500. They're asking the town to appropriate that money. Mm-hmm. And any discussion here? And what, what are we doing with this petition article? So what, what are we yeah. doing? Uh, it has a, a dollar amount, so both the Budget Committee and the Board of Selectmen are going to have to make a recommendation, a recommendation. on it. Yes. It May I move that we recommend I'll second it. it. Okay. All those in favor? Four uh, and I'm, one against? I'm going to abstain. Four and one abstention. Okay. Next, we have Step Up Parents New Hampshire Petition Warrant Article. Mr. Chairman, this is a petition that came in just the other day. The request is to appropriate $500 for this organization, which is a 501c3. It provides financial assistance and support to grandparents and relatives, caregivers, who, are, uh, who have stepped up to, uh, to help raise children, uh, parents struggling uh, with substance use disorders. Mm -hmm. And this is going on the... Um, this would be going on the ballot. For the... to go on the reoccurring one. Mm -hmm. after no, after. this no. is no. This is. It has to be a new one for this year. Right. It, yeah. Next year it would go. It on. would go if, on if, on if they petition the following, the following year. year. It, it would go on automatically on the the continuous yeah. one. Yeah, yes. That's what I, I believe. Right. We recommend yeah. that one. I'll second it. All those in favor, unanimous. And next we have the question of Warren Article for creating business licenses. I just, Mr. Welch. Uh, Mr. Chairman, that's on there for just for your information, more or less. Um, we get probably five or six questions a month on where do we go to apply for a business license in Hampton. Uh -huh. We don't have them. Most towns do, but we don't. Mm -hmm. So it's put on there so that we can ask you the question, do you want to do this or don't you want to do this? We get a lot of questions about it and a lot of people asking mm -hmm. for the forms. Yeah, and let me tell you, um, I'll just tell you my history of this. Uh, 
Hampton has never had a this That's thing. right. Right. And really, I've never seen the need for it. The only town that I know that does have it is Seabrook, and some old Seabrook comes out and pulls it out of you whether you want to pay it or not. That's probably true. Yeah, yes. that's how it works <laughs> yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's happened to me. That's I've the good part. Two stores in Seabrook, and they come and they collect it yeah. in person. And it, we used to be 10 bucks. But I personally don't see any reason for yeah, that. I, I, agree with I agree with Rick. Uh, we don't see a reason for it either, but because we get so many questions, One more we thing thought we should ask. Track of. So okay. the consensus is no Good. for that one. Dead, then. Okay, now where do we want to go on the other warrant articles, okay. Mr. Walsh? Mr. Chairman, there, there are a number of warrant articles here that you have generally talked about, but you have not told us where you, uh, shall we say, stand. Uh, and when I say stand, I'm just looking to try to find out two things tonight. Mm -hmm. One, do you want to see the warrant article continued in the, in the warrant? And two, what date do you want to uh, solidify as far as doing your formal recommendation to the warrant? Those are two things you need to do. You need to take a formal vote. Most of these you voted on, but just informally. Okay, so which one are we going to start with? What kind of road reconstruction? Where is that? Number, number 10. That would be number, well, mine is 18, but yeah, I mean it's there, is, there are a number of different... Uh, Warrant articles. Yeah, I've got 18. Okay. okay. So it's 18 down here. Now, okay. the request is to raise and appropriate $1 million to come from the Capital, uh, the capital Reserve Fund. <coughs> so there is currently something in the order of $1.9 million in there, but $1.5 million of that is, is already earmarked hmm. for uh, Route 1. Yeah. Let me explain to you that when you vote something from that capital reserve fund, we can only take the funds out of that fund when we produce a bill that we paid mm -hmm. for that money. Yeah. So uh, we haven't been drawing any money out of there because we haven't done the $1.5 million on, on uh, Route 1, <clears throat> and we haven't done any of the other projects that, are, uh, that could conceivably come out of there. So by the time this goes to the press, and you vote the $300 that are in here for this year, <clears throat> you're going to have about $1,200,000 in that account. Okay. So you could theoretically do this. It's up to you. And I think uh, the question that uh, our public works director answered was, <clears throat> it's going to take them a year. And I, and I think that's true. It's going to take them a year to get the engineering and all the state permits and federal permits required to do this work. So what is your suggestion? My suggestion is that you've got to start someplace. This is a warrant article they say you want to do. My suggestion is to seriously consider starting here. Okay. Mrs. Is Walsley? this the other uh, article where we need to insert that non-lapsing phase? Yes. That's correct. That's correct. Then I will so move. Sure. I, I don't have the exact language for the well, it's So it'll... are you making a motion to do the whole thing? I'm making a motion to insert the non-lapsing phrase. Yeah, it'll be the well, same. there's no yes. sense to do it if someone's not going to make a motion to bring this forward. Well, I just want to add the phrase before I vote on bringing it forward, because okay. Mark has mentioned that... Could, do we have to vote on adding the phrase, or can they just add the phrase? We'll just add the phrase. You just add That's the phrase. That's a standard policy. That. Okay, yeah, okay, then as... So, in conjunction with um, re recommending this article, it will have the non-lapsing phrase inserted yes. before it goes to the deliberative session. That is correct. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Can I have a second? Yeah. We'll see. That was your motion. That's All right. I'll second that. Okay. And I just okay. have a question, Rick. Yeah. So, when this says... 1998 Road Improvement Capital Reserve Fund previously established for the purposes of replacing the one Connett Road sewer enclosed drainage, whatever. We have to have specifically what road is in there. No. I think that needs to be reworded because it's to re redo all the roads in town. Right. It wasn't just for this one. This one specifically right. for okay. this one. So um, we have to earmark where the money's going to when okay. we do the warrant article. So I think probably we need to change the wording so it more better reflects that. Okay. All right. Can we incorporate that in my motion so you'll add I the don't, phrase? You don't think you need to do that because Mark and I are going to sit there okay. and tear this thing in pieces and <laughs> come up with an answer to it. Okay. okay. So, so we are going to or not going to vote? That's the question. Yes. And we are going to have a warrant article about uh, what, what's happening about those streets down there? On the beach. Yeah. So far, they're not here. 
that's that's an issue that was brought up. I've brought it up several times in the last yeah. few years. Um, there's there's over a million dollars worth of work to do down there, right, on all of those streets. So, is there going to be a Warren article? Not this year because I don't have the money to spend for it. If you're going to do this, yeah. has there already been a Warren article? Yes, those there has. That's it's what a twelve I'm million dollar bond that the town authorized. Uh, I think two years before I arrived here, yeah. included those streets. However. Nobody ever made plans for them. Yeah. So what they did is they, they did this by the seat of their pants. They just kept on digging and putting pipe in the ground. Yeah. And when they got there, they ran out of money because yeah. nobody planned it. Yeah. There were no plans. There they was planned it. They knew they were running out of money. Yeah. Right from the beginning, they knew it was never going to be It was a yet. guess. That's well, a pretty big guess. Everyone on that was the, on the board of selectmen knew it wasn't happening. So are we going to? Well, the thing is, I'm not going to vote for the one for Winnicott Road if that's one's not going to be taken care of myself. You need to have the money to do it without impacting substantially impacting the tax rate. Yeah. So this million dollars could go to that function. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying. So I if you wish to us to draw the warrant article in that fashion, we will take this warrant article and put those roads into it. So yeah. No. If that's already been approved, then we should just take the money out of the no, surplus no. we already no. have. No, because no. what, what you have to, what's happening here is that so money was all spent. Make a warrant article to have it taken out of the surplus. No. Then you're going to be borrowing money. You're right. You don't want to do that. I'm, I'm not going to vote for it until there's a plan in effect of what we're doing. Fred. Sir. So Can we find out what it would cost us to do those? Now, we we'll probably already have all the engineering and stuff for those ones at the beach. There was never any engineering. There was, no. there was zero. There's been some work of looking at it because they almost well, we, did it. We but have I looked at it, it several times, okay? And we do have bids yeah. to get the work done. The bids now are several years old. We could update those. Yeah. yeah it's not a big deal to do that. And we did previously have state approval to change those sewers. So I think that's still valid. And that we had a lot of infiltration on those roads down oh. there, and part of that is. You might as well just leave an open sewer line to the beach. Exactly. <laughs> so the marsh. for the Winnicunnet Road article, do we need a million dollars to start this? Well, I mean, if it's, if it's engineering and it isn't going to be done for another year. No. And what you're doing is you're, you're appropriating a million dollars to do a portion of the roadway. You're only going to take the money out as you do the as you do the work. So right. the engineering is going to take a work. Right. It's going to, excuse me. It's going to take a year, and you're going to take money out over that year from the million dollars you authorized. Yeah. Otherwise, what happens is if you if you, you start to do this in stages, yeah. you'll have a warrant article this year for engineering. You'll have a warrant yeah. article next year for licensing and permitting from the state yeah. and federal governments. Then the following year, you'll have a warrant article to do some work. Mm -hmm. And it goes on and on for year after year after year. You never get anything done. Yeah. And, the you know, one thing about down there on those streets down there is now there's significant construction going on down there, too. Yes. Oh, yeah. So yes. there's going to be... Big, you know, those condos and all of that other stuff that's going on. A lot of new construction. Yeah. That it's, you know, it's th that's something they haven't known was coming because that's been that was yeah. appro already approved probably ten years ago. And there are more people coming into town. I can draft Still, that they don't, have, they don't live here yet. Because I've already drafted it three times before, so it's not a big deal to draft it. I can get that done in short order and bring so, it back to you for your meeting on the thirteenth. So I have made a motion to accept this. With the non-lapsing phrase put in, mm -hmm. do I need to put anything else here? Because I'm ready to vote. Okay, well, I'll be voting against it because that's why we're having this well, other If discussion. we're going to have another million-dollar warrant article come in, then I, I'm not ready to move forward with any of these other warrant articles right now. I'm, yeah. not, I'm not seeing the big picture again. Yeah. You know, as of yeah, last week, I had a discussion with the finance director. As we stand right now, there's still expenses to be paid. We have $1.2 of, of, of uh, commitments. No, 1.2 million that is underspent as of last week. Now, Christy said there's still bills to be paid. Whatever's left over, that money's going to be going into the unassigned fund balance. When the auditors were here, I specifically asked them, what is the state requirement? They said there was no requirement, it was only there a suggestion. A, okay? It's a policy. It's a policy. We have our own policy of the town, Chapter 611-3. Unassigned fund balance retention. The balance of the unassigned fund balance shall, once accumulated at all times, be no less than the balance of unpaid property taxes due to the town to be collected by the tax collector as shown by the auditors in the last completed audit 
plus 5% of the net adjusted appropriations of the taxes to be raised for the town for municipal purposes exclusive of school, county, and precinct, as recommended by the New Hampshire DRA. So I calculated that as of the 1231 financials. So the taxes unpaid were 2.275 million. The municipal portion of taxes to be raised as of 1231-18 was 21 million. 5% of that is 1 million 52. So the total unassigned fund balance, minimum balance as of 1231-18 per chapter 611-3 of the Hampton Town Ordinance is 3.3 million. It was stated earlier tonight that we have 8.8 .8 million and that the town manager is suggesting to take out how much? So 1.3 million. Almost one and a half million. Okay, so that leaves 6.3 million left over. And I'm calculating and I'm calculating that we need 3.3. As of 2019, I verified with the tax collector that 2019 unpaid taxes are slightly over 2 million, which includes amounts going back to 2012. So I say we could easily put another million dollar warrant article in here and have the funding come from the unassigned fund balance and stop getting all this stuff done and giving the taxpayers hope again. So I'm not voting. I'm withdrawing my second to your motion right now. Mary okay. mm -hmm. If you, if you in fact, and you can obviously put another million dollar warrant out, you can put several million dollar warrant articles <laughs> in if you want them. But I'm going to have to ask the Board of Selectmen to give me a lot of money for interest for anticipation of taxes because yeah. we're not going to have any working capital at all. Yeah. We're going to have to borrow everything. Right. I'm, I'm not going to vote on something on somebody's opinion. If, we, if we're going to discuss the unfunded This is on public war. feedback who I'm representing. Excuse, excuse me. Yeah. I do not interrupt you and I require that you don't interrupt me, please. Just out of courtesy. If we're going to talk about the unfunded balance, the unassigned fund balance. I would want the <coughs> town manager and the finance director to give us their opinion on it and how they see it. When Fred came here, it was very low and he's the one that built it up and he's the one mm -hmm. that saw the need yeah. to have the capital there so we don't go out borrowing. So I don't think we should be voting on something that again, we don't have all the facts on, no matter whom we're representing. We need the facts and we need the people to tell us exactly why they figure, why Fred thinks he needs with that much money, what Christie's opinion is on that, and then move on from there. I'll withdraw my motion, Mr. Chairman, if that's acceptable. And when we meet, what, on the 13th? Hopefully we'll have all this stuff we're talking about. We'll have it fine-tuned. Okay. Okay. So What's that next? eliminates us discussing about Winnicunit Road. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Okay. So what's next, Mr. Uh, you did the solid waste and disposal services, so that's that. That is finished. Yeah. Um, I marked up my my draft warrant, so I'd know where I wasn't going to go. <laughs> um, appropriation uh, and. and uh, of state anticipated revenue. As you remember, the Department of Revenue Administration of the state advised us that we're getting 16, roughly $116,000 this year, which we have earmarked to uh, do a Lane Street, yeah. as far as the sewer correction is concerned, along with some money from the public works budget that was earmarked for that purpose. Okay. That is in last year, so it's encumbered money already. Okay. Uh, we're going to get another injection of $116,300 during 2020. Now, we either have a warrant article to earmark it for something, or it automatically goes into the unassigned fund balance as a revenue, mm -hmm. uh, one way or the other, which means you can't spend it until you get the following year to town meeting. Okay. So we, we have needs in both the fire and, and, and other departments, fire, police, emergency yeah. management, and so forth, for communications equipment uh, to complete out the communications cycle for the town. And those departments have requested this money be used for that purpose. So, so we redrafted this warrant article to accomplish that. What number is that? It's so number 29 in the new warrant. And so what are you suggesting, that we go forward with this? That we go forward with the with the warrant article that reads, uh, Shell Town and Hampton raise and appropriate the sum of 116.3, for the purpose of improving the radio and town emergency communication systems for the police, fire, public works, building emergency management, other departments of the town. Okay. Is that appropriation to be offset by 
116.3 from the state. I'll make that motion. I'll we'll second. Go forward. Oh. Whatever. <laughs> so we have a first, we have a second. All those in favor, unanimous. Okay. And you're going to get all these again, you know, to do your formal vote. This is just yeah, a straw yeah. vote. Yeah. Um, you have you you talked about it, but you haven't actually voted on the recycling and revolving account for the uh, recycling revolving account for the fund for the for the transfer station and the other income that comes in. This is Article Number Thirty Two. Um, so this is setting up another fund like the uh, fund. 26. This is setting up a revolving account. Correct. Right. It's the also, same. Also move. And do you recommend that, Mr. Welch? Oh, most, most assuredly. I wrote one of these in the 1970s for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, so uh -huh. I can tell you they work very well. I'll second Mary Louise's. Okay, we have a first, a second. All those in favor, unanimous. And? I can't flip that fast, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, the, uh, you, you have discussed it, but again, you haven't taken a, a straw vote to see if the warrant auditor should remain. And that's the heating system on the uh, second floor of the town office. So move. I'll second, I'll second that one. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I mean, that, he's been in our days and everybody's freezing. Yeah, you go in one, one part of the building and everybody's freezing like crazy, and the other part of the building, they're, they're all overheated. Yeah. yeah. And you can catch the flu in any part. Yes, that's yeah. true. <laughs> all those in favor? <laughs> Unanimous. Fred, did we do Article 33? Uh, Go back one. It's about to vote to raise an appropriate fifty thousand dollars for the purpose of participating FEMA. in the FEMA Advanced Assistance Grant Program that no, will reimburse that's, that's the town. One you've got to do seventy-five percent of yeah. the town's expenses in the grant program based on the expenditure of fifty thousand in completing the program requirements. Mm -hmm. With said appropriation to be funded from the unassigned fund balance. This funding will enable the town to establish a process to prioritize, manage, and administer requests for ha hazard mitigation grant program funds by Hampton on behalf of those property owners interested in elevating their structures or selling their vulnerable properties to the town within the FEMA flood hazard areas that are or will be subject to sea level rise mm -hmm. utilizing private and federal funds. Mm -hmm. I make a motion we move that one forward. Second. I have discussion on this. Yeah. This is uh, saying we'll reimburse the town 75% of town's expenses to people who either want to raise their house or uh, have the town purchase their home. So we are going to be 25% of an unknown number we're going to be responsible for, so I won't be supporting this article. Wait. We Have we talked to how many business owners? When we had FEMA in here, I thought we were going to have people approach us and find out how many people were interested well, in Well, I think this is a standard type thing. In yeah. fact, they do it all over the country, yeah. and it's going to become even a bigger program that probably eventually we'll just have to yeah, sign well, on to. Yeah, I just saw one state was denied their funding. Yeah, so. well, I was just in um, Staten Island this week where they had 12 feet of water came in and I, I was walking you couldn't even see the ocean we were like maybe three or four blocks away and that's, um, that's sinking too yeah but it may never flood there again they don't usually have this type of flooding yeah. but they they have made determinations that there are particular properties that need to go yeah uh, and you and know 25 percent of what what is the valuation of these properties yeah. Yeah, well, I don't think it really matters once the... Well, well the, the town's town, going to be held responsible for well, it. Well, the town is going to be held responsible. That's exactly Either right. Way. They're going to be held responsible yeah. both ways. Fred, does the town have to buy the properties? or No. Is, no. no. This is, they applied for a grant, so it's right. not it's not committing yeah. us to anything, right? Right. The yeah. only way we get committed to something is if we appropriate monies to become committed to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. This sets the program up. That's what sets the program up exactly. for. And this is something and it's been successful in a lot of different it areas. It has, but most towns, particularly in New Hampshire, don't fund the 25%. The person who requests the money, money funds, funds the 25%. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You don't appropriate money yeah. for that. because. Right. And we're not saying we're going to appropriate the 25%. Because the no. thing is, if there's no one, if the town doesn't do this, they can't even offer to pay that right. 25%. Right, right. So, so you know, at least they have a choice. It's, it's a catch-22 situation. If you, don't, if you don't do something in this area and do something at this point, then what happens is nobody's eligible to participate right. in these two exactly. projects. So what yeah. about those properties we have that 
have problems. Those are that those are the people that want this, and they're going to have to pay the entire cost on their rent. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. This is uh, you know. That we already is, have. I think I've seen three building permits in the last two weeks to raise structures. Yeah, it's not scaring them. people out of those locations. Yeah, I know it's not. Yeah. yeah. I don't and know how they're going to get to those locations. That's going to be the hard part. Yes. But, you know, they can actually have a viable house there. But right. it, it would be difficult mm -hmm. to get there. I just yeah. don't understand why it says the town's going to be reimbursed 75%. That's if we spend something. Yeah. If we spend something. But you've got to appropriate it to spend it okay, because we yeah. can't spend money not appropriated. The intention here is not to appropriate any funds and put funds in. Yeah. I mean, the board could do that if you want to put a warrant article in to appropriate funds for it. Yeah. In the That's future, not this our intention. Could change. It's so any change. additional expense we're going to have to come right. back to. Yeah. That's correct. This is yes. a, this could change in the future. It's a very again, it's another one of those fluid things. No one really knows what the answer is. You are can't coming. spend funds that are not appropriate yeah. by the town meeting. So are so, we voting or what? Yeah. What are we all doing? those we have a first and a second. All those in favor? Four, I'm four, opposed. one opposed. And which what? It's hard. I hate to keep asking you, but it's hard to tell with the way these are numbered. No, I don't. Article I know. 41, I think Pre is the next one. Um, conservation fund, yes. We haven't discussed that one. That. Second. Now, wasn't this the one that last year got turned down because someone raised it at the town they meeting? They raised it at the, the yeah. I hope someone doesn't do that again. Right, right? that was a bad yeah. move. Terrible, yeah. terrible move. Yeah. Put us behind the eight ball again. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor? Unanimous. Okay, you're done. Good. Okay, and then we'll do the final at another time. That'll have to be done everything okay. next week. Well, the 14th is the last day on which you could submit warrant articles. My suggestion is that the, the meeting on the 13th, you take up all the warrant articles that you have on that day. Right. You you vote as to what, what your recommendation will yeah. be to be placed in the warrant. Everything has survived except what I kind of wrote at this point. Yeah. Um, and then on the 14th, you're going to have to have a special meeting to make a recommendation because the budget committee meets shortly thereafter. And right. they're going to want to know what you want to do, too. Right. Good idea. Well, what are we doing? Are we going to do the... Uh... So we're just one moment, Mrs. Wolseley. Yeah. Oh. See you on that You've got your agenda right there, Fred. Yes, I do, sir. Uh, agreement with the New Hampshire Department of Transportation for the assignment of pipe agreement in the, under the railroad. What is that? We have a sewer pipe under the railroad. And oh. Of course, we have been paying the, the uh, railroad a fee to have that pipe there every year. And town council, or the state, has said that they will excuse us for the next 10 years in paying the fee, <clears throat> assuming we sign their agreement which gives us, instead of three days to remove it, 16 days to remove it. Nobody's going to remove the pipe. It's just, it's crazy to think about that is, because is, where's the sewage going to go? Is the pipe, oh, the pipe is needed. For oh, yes. Oh, yeah. That's yes. Okay. And we're going to save money. We're going to save money at this point. Okay. okay. I make a motion we approve that. I'll second. That we do what? Approve it. Approve the agreement. Okay. We have a first, we have a second. All those in favor? Unanimous. Next, we have the New Hampshire DOT Municipal Work Zone Agreement for Paving 101 West from Tide Mills Creek to Brown Ave. Mr. Chairman, that's a standard form. Uh, it's, a, it's something we've signed many times before. <clears throat> it puts everybody on notice that this is a state highway and the state is in control, and, and they will call the shots on doing the work. Good. I'll so move. Second. All those in favor, unanimous. Next, we have the dedication of the annual report to Warren White. So moved. Second. All right. those in favor, unanimous. Next, we have the approval of the annual report cover. So moved. Second. All those in favor. And now, uh, is there any other old or new business? Yep, Mr. I just have a question for the town manager. Sure. I'm being told, I know that the police patrol this, but I'm being told that there's still cars without inspection stickers in the high street parking lot. Oh, that's very interesting. I'll have to go take a check. <laughs> uh, as I recall, we made a long list up about three years ago. Yeah. And yeah. a number of cars disappeared shortly thereafter. Right, I'm sure. Yes. Will Some of those again. cars haven't been moved since the first time it snowed. So, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. not the intention of that 
long-term no. parking right. is not it's made the attention that they can park there overnight right. and they can continue to park there but That's the cars have to be moved and, and uh, I think it's something that we do need to address but on this board. People will work around it. Will you entertain a motion to adjourn? Yeah, any closing comments? Nope. Seeing what, none. What's the time? 910. 9 9 910. So I move that we adjourn at 910 p.m. All those in favor? Unanimous. unanimous. And are we having another meeting? No. 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 Yeah. no. Not here. I threw them out. <laughs> Thank you.